I'm this laid back because I'm not chasing anything. I'm cooperating with what the universe has already said. With me today is a guest that I've been waiting to get on the podcast for, for a while because I've been hearing so much about this man. Many stars like Smokey Robinson, Kanye West, Quincy Jones, Robert Downey Jr. have come to appreciate his inspiring message. His name is Tim Story, and Tim has a book out called The Miracle Mentality. Tim is literally the coach to many of the biggest players and rock stars in LA. For example, Robert Downey Jr. Now, Robert Downey Jr. is the guy who plays Iron Man. And this is what Robert Downey Jr. said about Tim. He said, Tim Story is the comeback coach. Quincy Jones is a man who has won multiple Grammy Awards. He said, Tim is the voice of encouragement to our generation. And Oprah Winfrey has personally called him a self-help guru. Welcome to the Mind Valley Podcast. So what did you learn from Quincy Jones? What did he tweak about you? Okay, this is this is a great story of the Quincy Jones. We were working on a show and, um, you know, Oprah has always been great to me. And we were going to do a Tim Story talk show that was not uh, like Oprah's, but it was going to be different. And so, so Quincy gave me an assignment and he said, um, here's what I want you to do. By tomorrow, I want you to tell me what your show is going to be about. And I want it to be three pages. I was feeling pressure, okay? So I went to a friend of mine's office, who's quite famous, this lady. She's a producer. And I was telling him that Quincy Jones had done assignment. And so the lady who wrote the movie said, oh, Tim, you're not a writer. L let me help you with this idea. And I go, no, he wanted me to do it. She goes, no, 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 no. You're not a writer. Let, let. Let, let me let me let me help you write this as a true story so i felt a little bit off but the lady was older than me and i thought more powerful than me and had written a, a well-known movie and so she she got in there and we spent like two hours so now i go to quincy jones house the next day this is a st amazing story i gotta tear these pages so he he sits down it's just me and him and he reads the first page like this, watch. It, it's about 12 midnight, I'm at his house. And then watch what he does. He goes like this and he throws it. And I said, oh, that's interesting. Then he reads the second page of, of this show of, that I was supposed to create. And he goes like this, watch. And he, and, he, and he throws the second page. Then he reads the third page and he gets it like this and he says, uh, who wrote this? And I said, uh, well, I was feeling pressure and this lady, <laughs> and I named her name. He said, get out of my house. <laughs> he kicked me out of his house. <laughs> and I started walking down the stairs of this big mansion in Bel Air. And I thought it was going to be like, if you argue with your girlfriend that he was going to say, Wait, stop. I don't mean it. Don't, don't, don't leave the house completely. And I just kept walking. And he, he kicked me out of his house. So then he called me the next day. He says, Tim, don't you ever do that again. He said, you downgraded you, your thought life. You downgraded who I think you are by handing over an assignment I gave you. I gave you the assignment because I needed your mind and your spirit. And you downgraded yourself by handing it to somebody else. What a lesson. But I, I tell you, in some strange way, that was some real big brother love. He, he loved me so much, he said, Tim, that they, they, can't, they can't teach the instincts you have. But you gotta, you gotta get deeper. He calls me little brother. Little brother, you gotta get deeper. And by handing away the assignment, that wasn't getting deeper. I believe when I was little Timmy from Compton, the universe had already spoken over me that I would go to over 75 countries of the world and influence tens of millions of people. I've never chased it. I simply cooperate. 
Gosh, I love that. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely love that. You know, Tim, in, in my in my first book, The Code of the Extraordinary Mind, I, I tell a story of a time I was going through a lot of stress in business. And an old friend of mine, Professor Sri Kumar Rao, who's a famous MBA teacher who brings in wisdom from the East into his MBA teachings, he, he told me to just calm the heck down, not in so many words. And he said, I just want you to, I want to read this poem to you. And the poem he read illustrates exactly what you said. So I want to read out the poem here yes. uh, to everyone yeah. listening. It's by the Rumi. Uh, the Rumi was a 13th century uh, poet in the Middle East. And he said, when I run after what I think I want, my days are a furnace of stress and anxiety. If I sit in my own place of patience, what I need flows to me and without pain. From this, I understand that what I want also wants me, is looking for me and attracting me there is a great secret here for anyone who can grasp it. Beautiful. And as you know, when you don't chase, there is a peace that right. can come to your life. You know, you're right. You're, you're absolutely, you're absolutely right. There's, there's a knowing that your miracle is already in motion. Like so many of you that are watching and listening right now, you might be in a difficult situation, but I think your next miracle is already in motion. I think that right now you're listening to a conversation that you've been waiting for for weeks, but that miracle was in motion and it landed today. So let's let's talk about that, Tim, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious, how does one get in the state? Now, why it's so interesting asking you this question is because You've sat down with Oprah Winfrey. You've sat down with Kanye West. You've sat down with Robert Downey Jr. All of these people who have done things that millions of people aspire to do. Are they actually living life like this? Yes. So I was recently four days straight with P. Diddy at his house mm -hmm. and just going at it as brothers and dialoguing about um, things that he has done, but things that are interesting to him now. And I think that what I see in creatives is that there's a longing to continue to stay in that path of creativity. But what stops us many times is these life interruptions, whether it be a relationship challenge or a health cha challenge or uh, a challenge with your staff. And so I think the state that I help let's say a P Diddy or anybody that I work with to, to, to help them get back into is back into that place of creativity when you're playing again, because I think that it's not like we need 101 great ideas. One great idea can change a person's entire life. And because I'm around hit makers and so are you, Mm -hmm. when Motown was working the whole idea was we only release hits in fact if you look at Motown on the outside of the old building it said Hitsville USA and so the, the Barry Gordy said to Smokey Robinson Stevie Wonder Marvin Gaye all we're looking for guys to get you launched is one hit so powerful I think people are so distracted, they're looking for 10 hits. All I need from you is one hit because that break creates a breakthrough. And so maybe that one hit could be your writing skill. It could be your listening skill. You as a psychologist, a psychiatrist, you as an inventor, you as a coach, one hit can open up a break that becomes a breakthrough for you, your children, and your children's children. 